The Watcher in the Water, a creature of pure horror. Where did it come from, and what manner of beast was it? Hello friends, it's Carl here, and today we'll be discussing the Watcher of Moria. When the Fellowship are outside the doors of Durin, Gandalf has trouble recalling the password, and Boromir, in his frustration, throws a rock into the lake. Moments later, they succeed at opening the doors, yet their joy is short-lived, for they hear Frodo cry out as he is grabbed by a tentacle that had emerged from the water. The Fellowship rush to his aid, slashes the tentacle and this causes it to drop him, and twenty more emerge from the dark water. They then flee into Moria, and they barely make it inside the mine, before the Watcher shut the doors and collapsed the rocks outside of the entrance. However, this isn't the last we hear of the Watcher, as it's mentioned again in the tomb of Balin. Balin had led some dwarves, including two members of Thorin's company, Oin and Ori, to reclaim Moria. At first they were successful, but they were soon overrun by orcs, and we learned that Oin was killed by the Watcher. So how did the Watcher end up in the lake besides the doors of Durin? Where did it come from? Was it always present there? Was it placed there by someone? Or did it come from somewhere else? Somewhere deep below? Gandalf says something has crept or has been driven out of dark waters under the mountains. Now this clearly tells us that the Watcher lived in some underground water cavern beneath the mines of Moria, and I have a theory about how it reached the lake. You see, the lake didn't exist before, it was a valley previously, and it had a river running next to it. This river, the Siranon, passed from the cliffs to the east, all the way to the lands previously known as Eregion. When the Fellowship passed by this river, they find that it's dried up, and eventually they see that some rocks had fallen and created a dam. This dam in turn caused the water to collect in the valley and form the lake, and I believe that the tremendous weight of the water that had collected there exerted so much pressure that it broke through some weak points in the rocky surface, and it then seeped down into the very depths of Khazad Dum, forming a connection between these depths and the lake. The Watcher would then escape its murky home and come closer to the surface. I believe that this change had occurred recently, because Gandalf was surprised at finding the dam, and the dwarven expedition that we had previously talked about had said, the pool is up to the wall at Westgate. And this shows us that the change had occurred, and that the lake wasn't this way before, that its level had risen. Now let's delve deeper and discuss how the water came to be under Khazad Dum in the first place. Now just to be clear, this is speculation. So after the Watcher attacks the Fellowship, Gandalf states, There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. And after he returns as Gandalf the White, he tells Aragorn, The world is gnawed by nameless things, even Sauron knows them not. They are older than he. Now I have walked there, but I will bring no report to darken the light of day. So Gandalf implying that it might be older than orcs is quite a significant statement. Orcs have been around since the first age of Middle-earth. So if the Watcher was possibly older than them, could it have been created by the first Dark Lord, Morgoth? We know that Morgoth had experimented on life and crossbreeding in the dark pits of Angband and Utumno. Could the Watcher and the nameless things that Gandalf mentioned be a product of this? And I believe it to be so. It wouldn't have been the only ally of Morgoth to dwell beneath Khazad Dum for the Balrog, another ally of his, had hid there also. Now I'd like to discuss what type of creature was the Watcher. Some compare it to a giant squid, the fact it lives in water and has tentacles, while others say it's similar to the Kraken of mythology. However, I think both ideas are slightly off, as they seem to want to ground or compare the Watcher to creatures we have in real life, albeit on a much smaller scale. I think when we consider the description of the Watcher, the fact that it had at least 21 tentacles, more than double that of a squid or kraken. That it was considered the nameless horror of the depths, living deep below at the foundation of the earth. And the way it was enshrouded in mystery, I think it's a pure eldritch horror. Something straight out of a Lovecraftian novel or Bloodborne. It's hard to define what an eldritch horror is. I guess it's something from out of this world, twisted, dark and unexplainable. And if the Watcher was indeed an experiment of Morgoth, a twisted experiment, would it not fit such a description? Finally, I'd like to talk about the Watcher's thoughts and loyalty. 
When the Watcher attacks the Fellowship, it immediately lashes towards Frodo, and Gandalf takes note of this as we see his thoughts in the books. The fact that Tolkien pointed this out seems to suggest that it somehow was attracted to Frodo, as if it felt or knew that he had the ring or an object of immense power. Was this an independent thought or sensation, or was it being influenced by Sauron? There is a quote that might play a part here that talks about Sauron. It says, He gathered again, under his government, all the evil things of the days of Morgoth that remained on earth or beneath it. Does this include the Watcher? Unfortunately, since this is speculation, I can't say for certain. But I think the Watcher was similar to Shelob. They didn't have any particular connection or desire for the ring. And thus I feel that even though Sauron did not have control over it, his will could still influence it and guide it towards the ring and the ring bearer. I like to compare it to Sauron's influence over Gollum. In the books before Frodo has even left the Shire, Sauron had started to call all the evil beings towards Mordor, and Gollum had found himself being drawn there also. Here he's captured and tortured for information about the ring. But what I'm trying to point out is that even though Sauron could not control Gollum, his influence still reached him like a nagging thought, and it did influence his actions to a degree. And I think this is what happened with the Watcher. Just as a fun fact, in the movies, when we see Gandalf falling with the Balrog, they end up falling into an underground lake at the bottom of the abyss. And Peter Jackson had initially planned a longer sequence where we'd see multiple Watchers and other nameless things fleeing the area to avoid the battle. I really loved making this video guys, it was one of your suggestions and it was really fun to explore it. If you enjoyed this, drop a like and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the wonderful world and lore of Middle-earth.